1982, Gambino associate Anthony Big Tony Moscatiello was on the receiving end of a vicious tirade by future family boss John Gotti. The man who had become known as the Dapper Don was recorded by the FBI threatening to blow up Big Tony and his house. So what did Moscatiello do to incur the wrath of Gotti? Let's check it out. Welcome to OC Shorts, bringing you detailed historical snapshots of the American Mafia and other organised crime. Feel free to subscribe if you like that sort of thing. Today we're going to take a quick look at Gotti crew member Anthony Big Tony Moscatiello and the famous exchange he had with his Ozone Park boss. Famously, in the late 1970s and early 80s, John Gotti was in charge of Carmine Charlie Wagon's Fratico's old Queens-based crew operating out of the Bergen Hunt and Fish Club in Ozone Park. He had a tough crew operating underneath him, including such famous names as Michael Mickey Boy Paradiso, Edward Lino, his brother Gene Gotti, Anthony Tony Roach Rampino, Willie Boy Johnston and John Carniglia, just to name a few. One mobster from the Bergen crew that is rarely spoken about was Gambino associate Anthony Big Tony Muscatiello. It is alleged that Big Tony handled real estate and insurance matters for the Gotti crew. In 1982, Big Tony had leased a car for John Gotti, and the future family boss was trying to get hold of Moscatiello to discuss it. However, Big Tony didn't respond to Gotti's calls in a timely fashion, infuriating Johnny Boy. Eventually, the two mobsters connected and the FBI recorded the call, capturing John Gotti in one of his famous expletive filled rants. Big Tony. Hi, buddy. Gotti. Buddy, my fucking balls. What? I got to reach out for you three days in a fucking advance? Big Tony. Pal, my wife just told. Gotti. You know, let me tell you something. I, I got, I need an example. Don't you be the fucking example. Do you understand me? Big Tony. Listen, John. Gotti. You listen. I called your fucking house five times yesterday. Now, if your wife thinks you're a fucking dunsky, or if she's a fucking dunsky, and you're going to disregard my fucking phone calls, I'll blow you and that fucking house up. Big Tony. I never disregard anything, you. Gotti. Well, you call your fucking wife up and you tell her, or I'll get in a fucking car and I'll go over there and I'll fucking tell her. Big Tony. All right. Gotti. This is not a game. I'm not going to have to reach for you for three days and nights here. My fucking time is valuable. Big Tony. I know that. Gotti. And you get your fucking ass down here and see me tomorrow. Big Tony. I'm going to be there all day tomorrow. Gotti. Yeah? Never mind you'll be there all day tomorrow. And don't make let me have to do this again. Because if I hear anybody else calls you and you respond within five days, I'll fucking kill you. These recordings would surface 10 years later, around the time of Gotti's 1992 trial for murder and racketeering. And interestingly, the full tape was played on national public radio and set a record for the number of times that the word fuck was said on air. We are all familiar with John Gotti's path after the time of this recording, including the assassination of Paul Castellano, a five families boss, him beating several high profile trials, and finally being sent down for life in 1992. But what became of the less famous Anthony Big Tony Moscatiello? Big Tony would be handed the opportunity to run gambling and business ventures in Florida, and this became very lucrative for the Gambino associate. Despite many reports suggesting that Moscatiello was an official member of the Gambino family, it appears that he was never actually inducted. Former Lucchese family member John Panisi said, Tony was a Gambino associate who possessed the ability to conduct himself as a made member. By 2001, Moscatiello was reaping the vast financial benefits of a successful mobster life. However, a Florida-based businessman called Constantinos Gus Boulos was causing problems for the mob in Florida. Boulos had initiated a power struggle for control of a lucrative fleet of gambling ships which the Gambino family had an interest in. 
he was trying to retake control of Sun Cruise Casinos after he had sold them to fellow businessman Adam Kadan for around $150 million. However, Bulis believed that the sale was fraudulent and that he wouldn't be receiving the money that was owed to him. Adam Kadan had known Moschitello for years and was paying Big Tony and another mobster called Anthony Little Tony Ferrari thousands of dollars per month to handle security and also for the use of their mob connections. According to mob informer Peter Bud Zaccaro, Moschitello had told him that the guy Bulis was making a lot of problems with gambling in South Florida. There was a lot of money at stake. They needed this guy taken care of right away. And so on the 6th of February 2001, Gus Bulis was driving in his BMW in downtown Fort Lauderdale. He suddenly found his vehicle blocked in with a car at the front and a car at the back. A black Mustang then pulled up alongside him and several shots were fired into his vehicle through the driver's side, killing Bulis. The order for the hit had come from Moschitello himself, who had flown down from New York in a private jet to relay the message that the murder had been approved from the top of the Gambino family. Big Tony then flew back to New York and then was in the Big Apple at the time of the shooting. The hitman who killed Bulis was allegedly John J.J. Garino. The vicious Garino used to boast about his connections to John Gotti and once threatened to have a man, Ralph Liotta, a deli owner, raped in front of his own family unless he paid back a $26,000 debt. However, in 2003, Liotta finally snapped and shot Garino four times, killing him whilst inside Liotta's corner deli. The investigation into Gus Bulis' death would eventually lead back to Moschitello and Ferrari. And after a mistrial in 2013, both were found guilty of first degree murder and were sentenced to life in prison without parole in 2015, but avoided the death penalty. In an interesting twist, the Miami Herald broke the news that for many years Moschitello had actually been an FBI informer. Big Tony had been indicted in 1983 along with Gene Gotti, Angelo Ruggiero, John Carniglia, Edward Lino and several others on racketeering and drug charges. The case ended in a mistrial in around 1988 under the cloud of jury tampering. At the retrial on July the 27th that year, the jury failed to reach a verdict. However, at the third trial in 1989, Gene Gotti and John Carniglia were sentenced to 50 years for running a heroin distribution ring. Although, by this point, Moschitello had been dropped from the case. According to sources, it was after the first mistrial that Big Tony had started working for the FBI, providing them with information. Attorney Ronald Fischetti, who had represented Gene Gotti, said, I thought it was unusual that they dropped the charges against him, but I didn't think for a minute he was an informant. He was involved with them because he was their financial guy. He did their tax returns and real estate ventures. He wasn't in the gangland business. He was the most ungangster gangster. It appears that after 15 years of providing the FBI with information, Moschitello stopped cooperating with the feds just after the time of the Bulis hit. Interestingly, in 2019, a retrial was ordered for this case. This was due to the fact that a comment made by the deceased hitman Garino, which had stated that Moschitello had ordered the hit, was deemed unreliable evidence. This information had come second-hand from yet another deceased source. A trial date was set for March 23, 2020, but it is unclear if this went ahead. I hope you found that interesting. Thanks for watching.